Hello everyone, in one of the recent episodes I talked about singleton types, I actually did like an experiment with them in the F around and find out series, um, but I realized uh, after making that video that there isn't a lot of content about singleton types that would actually introduce the idea and show you what they are, like what kinds of things have singleton types and what the general idea is. Uh, so I decided to fill that gap and this is what we will be doing today. So yeah, this is the video about singleton types, let's just get to it. So a singleton type in essence is a type that only has one member. Uh, we can think of types as sets of possible values that can fit into that type. So when we have a value of, let's say, a type string, how many values can we put into something that holds values of this type? So for strings, it's actually a quite large uh, set of possible values, but for something like a Boolean or an option of Boolean or a case class of Booleans and, and Booleans and options and maybe like bytes, there's a finite set of values that can fit into that. So, and we can actually calculate how many. And the simplest, like two cases of a type that has a very low amount of values are zero and one. Zero in Scala is the type nothing. There are no values of that type. We can never actually hold the value of that type uh, in, in our functions. Uh, a function that will take an argument of type nothing can never be called, for example. And the other case is unit. It's like a special case, basically. And unit has only one, exactly one value. So this is the most, probably the most uh, widely known singleton type in Scala because it shows up even in the main method when you create your first application. And it's the result of any kind of side affecting things that just re don't return any kind of other information. So it's pretty uh, commonly seen. So unit is a singleton type in itself. There's only one value. We can write this, this is the unit uh, literal. And we, this is how we create an, a unit value. We can also like make it a side effect, uh, mutate a variable or you know, print to standard output, whatever. Uh, all of these, um, all of these uh, things will just yield a unit value, but uh, this is the literal, this is just the way to get that value without doing anything else. And this is the only, the only value of that, of that type, of type unit. Uh, so again, anything else that we do just yields this same value. So even if I do something like print line, uh, this will be the exact same instance at runtime. Um, maybe, okay, maybe this has to be equals. Uh, the, the same value at runtime, right? So yeah, this is actually even a compiler warning because this will all, always yield true because there's just one value of that type. So uh, there are other kinds of singleton types in Scala. Uh, for example, any kind of object, anytime we create a, an object using the object keyword, uh, this will be a singleton type. So the value object has a type called object.type. And we will see the same kind of syntax for specifying a singleton type of a value later on, but just remember this dot type syntax. So, you know, you can just uh, assign uh, a value with, with this uh, singleton object. And if you use something like an IDE to add the type of it, you'll get something like this, and that's uh, completely normal. And this is a singleton type, but only in the scope that this is unique, right? Because uh, there's one object, because this is the top level of my file, it's not nested in anything else. But when we have an object nested in a class, uh, then it's no longer globally unique. So there is a singleton type, like um, if we say child type, and this is child, this works. Uh, there is a singleton type for it, but it's still unique or still a singleton within that class. So if we wanted to, to deal with another instance of that class, yes, it's actually a singleton within that class instance. It will be a different value and a different type between instances of the class. So when I save this and I try to compile it, it doesn't work because the other instance of the class, um, it, has a, it has this child object, but this has a different type. So essentially what we have here is this is class.this.child.type and this value, this other one, let's just assign it to, a, to another val, 
this would be another dot cloud dot child dot type. So this is a, essentially a different uh, value, a different kind of type. And the, a related topic here is path dependent types because this is essentially what we, what we have. Uh, this could be like a type number like child and the type child in my instance doesn't have to be the same as the type child in another like uh, type x another dot child like this type is different than just child or can be different or the compiler cannot prove it's the same so it's effectively not so uh yeah so we cannot compile this kind of code and i think that's good uh it's just it's a way to safeguard some uh, against some mistakes so this is it like uh singleton objects have singleton types and we've done that uh, forever but this is probably less commonly seen that a value any kind of val also has a singleton type so when i have a val called greeting here uh doesn't really matter what it is yeah, i can even assign it to uh like say it's a string and not implement it um then let's just say i did implement it with something else doesn't matter what though uh, then I can create another value and I can use the type of the previous one as a singleton type. And then I can, like, there's only one value that I can possibly use to fit this type and it's greeting. Uh, unless I had proof that this type of greeting is equivalent to something else. But I don't. I only know that this is a subtype of string. So I can do this. I can assign a value of, of greeting. I cannot say, I, I cannot do, you know, hello and even if I use hello here like the same kind of string literal because I use a string type like even if I don't change it if I don't set it explicitly this will be inferred as a string uh, we are losing this information and the compiler doesn't know anymore that greeting underneath is a hello uh, constant so we cannot do that so we can only deal with the same exact uh, value we can only use that value to fit that that hole but then uh, another thing that we can use this syntax in, uh, so it's not just for vals, we can do the same for function parameters or, uh, I don't know, class fields, it's the same thing really. Uh, so we can say that we are taking a parameter of any type and returning the exact same value. And we can, you know, use the dot type syntax again and we return it. So this is effectively the identity function, but it's not implemented with like um, a, a polymorphic type, like the actual identity function here in the Scala standard library uh, but we can still call it with any kind of parameter and we'll get the exact same type back so fun was called with an int and we got an int back so I think that's pretty cool that's pretty nice although it does it does use a slightly more complicated language feature than just generics so you know pick your own adventure and if you want to design APIs like this you can but just know that not as many people will understand what's going on as with uh, the usual identity kind of generic uh, parameters. And uh, this is just a piece of trick, I guess. This is from this is Scala 3 code, actually. Uh, the rest was uh, Scala 2.13. Um, we can also use union types, which, is where, which are only available in Scala 3 for now, or probably will be ever. Uh, we can use that with singleton types as well. So when we have two values, we can say that an expression that sometimes evalu evaluates to one of them and sometimes to the other is a union of these two singleton types. If I don't assign this, uh, like if I don't specify the type here, this will be inferred as a string. Um, maybe if I say final, uh, it's still a string. But uh, if we explicitly say that what the type is, that it's a union, uh, Scala will allow us to compile this. And I can say, uh, let's say we had a C. Uh, I cannot use the C here anymore. This will just not compile because it's not a subtype of the union. And uh, to be a subtype of the union, you just need to be a subtype of one of the parts of it. So this is it. This is with union types. And we have more. Uh, finally, uh, the most interesting thing here, I think, uh, literal singleton types. So this is a relatively new feature in Scala because we didn't have this in before 2.13 at all. There was just a hack that actually required to use macros. In this case, we are using shapeless just to show what this looked like. And uh, we would use this witness uh, kind of construct. And we would use basically this kind of weird syntax like w or you know witness dot uh, 
quoted string or this could be a quoted uh, number and I would have to say something like this and this would be a way to basically get the singleton type of a literal value so like a, an integer literal or a string, string literal uh, we can also do the same for booleans um, that's basically it so essentially what this allows us now in 213 is to have a value that's annotated with a type of that specific constant so it's hello as a string or it's 42 as a number whatever we want uh, it can be just a type right because we know exactly there's just one value of that type and what's interesting is that now we can say uh, we're going to have an x dot type and this will be hello and now this actually compiles because well if we didn't have this type annotation here it wouldn't because now this is just a string Scala doesn't keep the very like the very specific type by by default uh, if you want to keep it I uh, need to make a final val now it's actually a string literal like a string hello and fun fact this uh, kind of like singleton like literal singleton types uh, this was still available in 212 actually we just didn't have the syntax to it to do it uh, you couldn't annotate this type here although if you if you had a, a Scala REPL like a Scala 212 REPL you would still see something like string parenthesis uh, hello so something like that uh, so we always had singleton types or we've had them long before 213 uh, we just didn't have the syntax to use them very conveniently we would have to resort to something like uh, like shapeless here so now uh, because we have this very specific type we can actually uh, use the fact that x dot type is the same as hello and that's that's all right now so now there's more about this um, if we want to force Scala to infer the type that's a singleton type or something very specific uh, we can we can make it a final val then we don't have to say uh, what the actual singleton or what the actual literal is uh, however there's another place where this would be useful if Scala actually wanted to use a singleton type uh, in generic parameters because we've, if we don't say that uh, if we call a function that just returns the, like this is the identity function right if we call it with something that is known to be a literal singleton type or if we just pass a singleton uh, a literal uh, it will not work the inferred type will just be string uh, in this case so if we say that it has to be a subtype of singleton uh, it will only be able to infer a type that's actually a singleton and string is not uh, of course i guess it could say string with string uh, with singleton and that would work by like up to this point but then we also lose the information because this is what would be returned uh, so instead Scala will infer here uh, that this is the hello string as the type and that's what we'll get in the output and then we can like we have this type like this is equivalent to having hello in the type and so we are able to assign it to a different value uh, of that type of that singleton type uh, and finally we are able to implicitly get a proof that these two types are indeed equivalent so the singleton type of a constant of a val uh, is the same as its singleton literal singleton type and finally scala 213 adds a type class that allows us to get a value of a singleton type any kind of singleton type so it's called value of and there's this uh, utility called value of uh, starting with a lowercase v uh, that just summons a value out of thin air and we don't need an implicit this is almost like implicitly but we don't need an implicit value of a we just need to have proof that it's a singleton type and then we can you know get that value and also you need this value to exist somewhere so we can use this uh, like this value of uh, or just this get singleton that I defined we can use this with any kind of singleton type for example this is the object that we are in uh, it has a singleton type uh, this is the previous value so this a that we just defined uh, we can use that here uh, and then we can get implicit proof that these types are actually the same uh, because both of these are a type right and then uh, we can do the same with literals uh, literal singleton types like a string like a number uh, like a boolean and finally this is what, what I think is pretty interesting we can make any kind of parameter kind of implicit without using the implicit keyword uh, well in in here because we are effectively calling another function 
that takes an implicit value of and it gets it even though we didn't define any kind of implicit value here. We just have a value and we specify that we want to pass an, a value of of the singleton type of that value. So basically this parameter that we get will be passed in this value of instance. So I guess there will be some kind of compile time machinery to uh, to put it in there. And it's probably not available to us, just implement it in the compiler. Uh, I, I think that's the case. So so this is it. This is what's, uh, what's available, what's possible with the value of type class. So there are a couple of libraries that work with singleton types. We've already seen shapeless. It provides some more uh, utilities to, uh, to work with singleton types. There is also refined, which I think allows you to, to use uh, number literals, for example, to specify uh, ranges. So you can say that the value is a type uh, like int refined uh, range 0, 10, and the, any kind of value that you want to put into that needs to be between 0 and 10. And finally, there's, uh, there's the library singleton ops. Uh, I have it in my dependencies here. Um, and it uh, provides some more like operations on singleton types. Uh, for example, here we have a function that takes a string and accepts only strings that start with the HTTPS uh, prefix. Uh, so uh, what we are essentially doing is uh, here we are using the literal singleton type to specify that uh, this first string, which is also a singleton type of the parameter, uh, has to start with this uh, HTTPS prefix. Of course, I could just use a like a constant here, but then what would it, what would be the point of having this kind of validation? So we take this implicit like this starts with, and then we wrap it in require, which will ensure that if the value here evaluates to false, the code will not compile. Uh, so if I let's say break this, and now we get a failure at compile time. So yeah, so this is like just one possible practical use case, uh, like slightly practical because normally you wouldn't use like you wouldn't do this on the type level probably. You would rather do something like uh, a macro to validate that this uh, whole URL parses. Uh, I think HTTP4S allows you to do this, like actually provides a, a macro to validate a URL. So yeah, that's probably what you should be using anyway. Uh, but you know, this is just an example of what is possible with singleton types, with literal singleton types. We barely scratched the surface and there's so much more you can do. Uh, I just wanted to give you like a a uh, brief introduction. So this is what you can do with this. You can probably do much more. I'll link some resources in the description for you to learn more if you want. Uh, and yeah, I guess that's it. So if you like this video, as always, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.